everything I had been taken away, everything I knew being taken away. So the anger. This is this every day doesn't go away, man. Anger, the pain. I'm like, why me? Why me? For so many years. Where I've been was dead. So I didn't care about anything. I wasn't feared of dying. I had nothing to lose because I'd already lost everything worth losing. You know, health is your number one priority. Now, everything what I had to lose went. I was, my heart went. The personality went, the old way went. I turned into some completely different person. A couple of my mates was into the kickboxing semi-contact kickboxing, so I just started training with them. And not, look, not looking to pursue it in, in any way, but obviously with my back, background in boxing, it was, I just found it easy. It was just one point score, so it was just like, bang, and you score, there's your point. So it was just like, it was simple, I just took to it like Dr. Doc, Water, and it was just simple for me to do. So um, I went in a couple of competitions, um, just easy work for me. And then we had we had this competition. In the first fight of the competition, uh, I, it was no weight categories. Some lad hit, hit me, um, and he was much heavier than me. So I got a, uh, started. A, I got like a, a black eye straight away. The swelling swelled up on my left side, just underneath my eye. Um, so I just continued continued right away to the final. By the time I got to the final, I um, obviously had to pull out because my eye was like more, more or less shut and I was just so con concussed, I was just dizzy. Um, so I couldn't even, I remember it like it was yesterday, I'll never forget the day. Um, <sighs> I had to um, just, I'm gonna be like this. I mean, no, there's nil chance of survival. Um, my parents was asked, well, they was asked, to, did they want to donate any of my organs? Um, it's continued. Obviously, I stayed in the same state for I think it was two weeks. Um, every day, obviously, it was just saying, you know, he's brain dead. Um, and then I just woke up. But I didn't wake up, wake up. When I did wake up, it was like open one eye. I was semi-conscious, 
drift in, in and out of a semi-conscious state for maybe another two, three weeks. Can't really recall the exact time. Um, I all I remember is people around my bed and I was just squeezing the hand. Um, you know, I couldn't sit up. I couldn't talk. Um, so from there, the doctors were still telling me parents, and now he's, he's not going to be ever. He's, he's going to be severely brain damaged. Um, and taking in mind, these are the same doctors who previously had told my parents, "Does he want to donate his organs?" I'm sitting in a wheelchair. I can't even use use the bathroom on me by myself. You know, I can't stand up. I can just about sit up. Um, so from there, I just there's only me who can get me out of here. So I'm, I think I cried <laughs> every day, all day, every night in this place um, until obviously I started to be proven. Um, my movement started coming back and I just never looked back from there because I started getting better and better. had a bad brain injury and you know a lot of people don't come out of brain injuries as you know but it was like it wasn't me it's just I was brain injured and that was it I just didn't realize anything because it's just somebody else just lying there it wasn't it wasn't me I just recognized faces you know as the weeks went, went by I started realizing, and I remember the f the first time I got this is when I got able to sit up because I couldn't sit up because I'd sloped down, you know. You just patted patted up with all pillows behind you, and, um, and the slope you just sloped down. It's just like you couldn't sit. I couldn't sit in a wheelchair. You have to be all patted up with all kinds of pillows, and you have. It's just like, because you just, you don't have one side of your body. So you just, the weight of the of my bad side, boom. You know, so, so you just, you just, you're just not aware of the problem that you've got. Anyone who's had a brain injury, um, obviously it comes part and parcel as the package. There's a good chance of you having epilepsy. Um, Obviously, they told me, well, they told my parents and me that he was going to be epileptic. So me being, me being me, and I, nah, no, I'm not going to take no tablets, I ain't taking no drugs, I'm going to be epileptic. You know, the same doctors told me he's going to be dead, he's going to be severely disabled. 
Now the doctor is telling me now he's got, I'm going to be epileptic. He just went like I'm shitting up in a wheelchair, you know. Got me, me head set, getting right and I'm getting, getting better. You know, I'm getting like, you know, I'm getting motivated, I'm going, I know where I'm going. I'm, I'm like, I know that if I don't walk out of this place, I might as well stay here forever. So they're telling me I'm going to be epileptic. So one of the weekends, I used to get weekend leaves, just like prison from the hospital. So one of the weekends I went, got on leave, got on leave I had a seizure. I didn't know what it was. I panicked. I thought, shit, it's happening again, it's happening again. That initially went through my me, me, me mind. Um, and then I, I, I woke up in hospital again. So I got, got tablets. Still didn't take them. Until it happened again. Um, obviously, I, I had to start trying to take the best tablets for me. Just the word alone is horrible, isn't it? Epilepsy. Sounds like horrible. Just 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 alone. Why can't it be like a nice name? You know. Um, back in back in the day, if you was epilepsy, they used to put you in a madhouse, didn't they? Do research on it. Everyone who's got it was like a like me. They don't wanna tell. Because you don't want to get laughed at, you know. Not so long ago, last year, I was, I was in Manchester, and there's, there's a, there was a fella having a seizure, you know. And the, the kids are videoing him. I'm thinking, no, that could be me. Do you understand? Poor fellas having a seizure, all fucking crowds around them. You know, no one knows what to do. Everyone's panicking, and the kids are videoing him. Come on. Come on. So. It needs to be brought up. People need to be aware of it. Let's tell everybody, yeah, I've got epilepsy. And what? Help me. I'll help myself for you help me, but let's be aware of it. Raise awareness for it. But it's crazy how it is. It's not, there's still not an out. It's just crazy. You know, as I said, yeah. Living with epilepsy for me, you know, it's a struggle. It's a fight every day, you know. I train fighters. That's my job. That's what I do. Because I know I'm a fighter. Every day I fight. Not just like, I fight every day. You know, it's an incurable disease, what you've got. And that's what it is. There's no cure for it. You know, so you've just got to soldier on. And it comes to a point where, like, you hit a brick wall. And many times I've hit that brick wall. You know, and I've kept it to myself. And, you know, because one thing what I never got, and they still do it now, in hospital, right, I'm a young, fit man, Right, my life in front of me. Right, I've had this injury. Okay, 
So I would have given me all speech therapist, occupational therapist, physiotherapist. What about the counselling? That's what I needed more than anything. You need counselling. I've got to go the rest of my life living like this. My whole life has changed. You know, people look at me, think I'm Wayne's kill. I don't know. People, people assume me. People think they know me, but they don't know me at all. And you know, I, I just want people who do suffer in silence to come out. And you know, don't be afraid. Don't just lock the door. Just come out. If I can come out, you can come out, and we can deal with it together. I inspire people motivate them to achieve. I know anything is possible and I know you can never give up because, you know, why, when, I, when I was in hospital and some of the, you know, the experience that I had, it was like, I was so low, low. I couldn't go no lower. So the only way was up. So as the days and the weeks and the months went going by, I was improving and improving, you know, and I was looking at all my mates, they all start, they were all going out and, and I couldn't do this. I'm sitting in some wheelchair and I'm thinking, it's up to me now to pull myself out of this and, you know, it or just sit, sit back and just accept it. Do you know, but as I say, I'm a fighter. I won't accept for defeat and as, I'll never accept defeat. I'm still fighting now. Anybody who's going through similar circumstances to what I'm being through, and you just gotta, it's easy said than done, but you just gotta get up and you've just gotta get your head around it because it's not going away. You're the only one who can make it go away. You just gotta, your mindset and deal with, deal with it in your own way. Not the way I'm telling you to, in your own way, because we're all different people. The passion that Wayne has is quite phenomenal. And really, without people like Wayne, these clubs just wouldn't exist. It's not something you just, uh, you know, you, you rock up the stairs and things get done. No one gives you any, many favours, no one really gives you any handouts. You've got to go and make it happen yourself. And it's about having a passion for something that drives you on to, to produce facilities like this and to turn up every day and train kids for no money. Yeah, he's a special character. You know, I've lived my life. I'm still living now. All them doctors who told me I'll be dead, professors, they're all dead. And I'm still living. I'm still living. So, there's life. There's life. You know, there's times where, like, I've sat there crying my eyes out. Because, you know, it's one thing dealing with what I've got, you know, at my age now, disabled, di disability. You're as dis disabled as you want to be. You know, I'm more active, I do what I do. Do you know what I mean? I'm more active than able-bodied people. Um, so my disability, now I've learned to accept that. But the epilepsy is like, you know, you can be anywhere. I walk everywhere I go, I go for a night out. I'm looking, toilet, exit. Just looking around where to go. Because if I feel it coming on, I've got to go there. I've got to be there. I'm not going to fall in front of all people. You know, I can feel it. I get a good, I get a good warning. You know, I, I, I can, you know, if I felt one now, I say to you, listen, I can feel it. I, I see you coming on. You know, you usually panic more than me. I, I have to deal with it, but I'm more worried about, about you panicking. Because I can hear you phone, phone my ambulance, do this, do that, what do we do, what do we do? He's going to swallow his tongue and I'm just talking all madness. And I'm like, I'm, I'm like going through it. But I can, I mean, the feeling what you get is just like, it's just like, He 
You can't, you can't even describe it. Give me a minute. Oh. Yeah, that was good enough.